legalise marijuana. You're mad. Educate. Regulate. You're naive. A clean, green family. Your sexuality is something. Order. Order. This is what Order. democracy looks like. Order. Enough is enough. Okay, boomer. Um, do you want to do anything? Or do you, can I work? Or, okay, cool. <laughs> Kilda, I just wanted to make sure that you are supporting the election access at third reading. Yeah. Okay, sweet ass. The other thing, what happened yesterday? Uh, shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, catch you later, mate. Bye. A few years ago, someone on Twitter said maybe the reason that none of the politicians want to get engaged in the cannabis debate is because they'll end up in the Herald smoking a giant bong. That's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Kilda, hey, I'm Chloe. I'm taking you guys on a tour of Parliament. Yep, cool. This is the tunnel which connects Bowen House to the Beehive, and then the Beehive's connected to Parliament. Parliament is such a weird space. It feels like a really oppressive environment. When I first came into Parliament, I was trying to retain my sense of self. I remember thinking, do I have to start talking like a politician? What does it mean to talk like a politician? inside the parliamentary buildings, there are thousands of people. They all work ridiculously long hours and they're under immense amounts of pressure. Like last night, we were here until half midnight and people are getting pent up, people are angry, people are sleep deprived. And then you come back at 7 a.m. in the morning and you do it all again. I don't think it's sustainable to be fighting all of the time. There's exhaustion and there's burnout, but if you're not there for the long haul, then it's hard to see the work getting done at all. So do you guys know how members' bills are chosen in New Zealand? All backbench government get a little chip and it's essentially a lottery type process. That's the only way that you can get a bill up unless you're a minister. This is the biscuit tin, which is literally a biscuit tin. <laughs> we bought it at Decca many, many years ago. Yeah, to have something to put the chips in. We do a draw, pull out the number, and that bill will be available for consideration and could get passed into law. Yeah. So it's quite exciting. Really. It is, but it's like literally a lottery. I think politics um, is fucked. Happy? Sweet as. All right, team. I've always been hesitant to provide any sense of timeline as to how long I'll stay in Parliament because I wouldn't be able to give you an authentic answer. <laughs> I don't know. I have regular conversations with people that I love where I talk about leaving this place. Um, people become very odd when they have this job. <laughs> Of course you can. Selfie, you now we are millennials. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Lovely to meet you. Are we all doing a hug? Are we all trying yeah, to Yeah, do it. <laughs> oh. It feels very odd being in the public eye. It's hard to have a private life with a public profile. Totally. Being a Green Party MP, sometimes it just feels as though your life is a bit of a platter. You know, there's the drug law reform here, age thing over here, there's the kind of gay, bisexual thing over here. And those are all different ways that you can pigeonhole me. What do we want? Trans rights! What do we want? Now! Political change is a really hard thing. In order to get to that tipping point, you need hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of everyday people doing their bit. We care about you, Jesus loves you, but he has commanded every man everywhere to repent. We must humble ourselves in the sight of God. And There are a huge number of those who don't vote because they don't feel represented or because they don't feel their vote means anything. People who are really pissed off at the way that things are when they decide to disengage is that it reinforces power and wealth in the hands of the people who already have it. Okay. Cool. Yep. My name is Chloe Swarbrick. Um, I love this scene. My name is Chloe Swarbrick. My name is Chloe Swarbrick. Ah! I remember really vividly Googling how to become Auckland's mayor. I had to pay $200 for administrative fees. I had to have two people nominate me and I had to be over the age of 18. I was 22 at the time, which kind of became my defining feature. Everyone else has left now. I bet that this got you stressed out. Wondering what can we do now? Baby, let it burn out. 
so we're currently on Karangahape Road, otherwise known as K Road, which is a one kilometer strip of road that could be my entire universe if I didn't have to venture outside of it. Rolling your ankle the day you have to move. I know. I'm going to be useless. That's fine. Well, there's not much has changed. <laughs> Alcohol, tote bags, and candles. This is the essentials. What's that? Kitchen. Okay. For the kitchen, it's pots. I mean, you can figure that out if you want. You're going to let someone else decide the place where it's okay. I do not want to have autonomy over where the pots go. I have too many decisions in my life. She gets mad at me. She'll try and FaceTime me when I'm in like a caucus meeting. And then she's like, you never talk to me. She never does. <laughs> Absolutely I never. I her so much and she never answers me. I forget, you know, she's this big politician. <laughs> Yay! I love that couch. I don't own a car, I don't own a house. That was my, my mark of being a grown-up. Dad looks so <laughs> handsome in this. Yeah, my dad's my hero. I don't know how to put into words how much I love him and how much of an incredible human being he is. I remember growing up debating politics and philosophy and not necessarily knowing that that's what we were debating, but debating those things with Dad. The number one question she used to ask is, Dad, what's the purpose of life? <laughs> While that sounds quite sweet, when it's every week for about five years, the novelty wears off. <laughs> Did you ever think she'd be a politician? No, not at all. You know, it's not something you'd ever probably wish upon your children, to be fair. <laughs> Dad told me when I was about 13 that I was adopted. Was at that point in time, I was going through this real identity crisis. And I was dealing with it in unhealthy ways. I was in a really dark space personally, and I didn't necessarily have a way to recognise that was depression. I grapple with the mental health thing quite a bit. There are not many politicians who are willing to go on the record about mental health. And I discovered why when I spoke about it. Because I got emails from people telling me I was crazy and I should never be near power. And Parliament is a toxic culture that chews people up and spits them out. The system dehumanises people and you therefore become inhuman and disconnected from the people who you purport to represent. Our job is to inspire people to see that they themselves can be that change if they engage in it. Plain and simple, nobody ever changes the world alone. And I just get amped when I see heaps of people deciding to get on board with that opportunity for change, because in a country as small as ours, it doesn't take much. I will keep going as long as I feel like I am making change, but I don't want to be here in 10 years because change is needed now. Does anyone want any kai? Vegan, vegan, gluten free. We have uh, all dietary requirements catered for because we are the Greens. This is what we call civil service. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming.